seems legit. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm showing you how I made this fabulous glittery uh, two layer bauble set. So I will also show you how to design it from scratch. But just know if that's a little bit out of your zone, there are a bunch of these types of designs on Etsy that you can purchase instead. So let's get started. Okay, so we're in Lightburn and I'm drawing a circle. Now, as you can see, it just did a perfect circle. The way I did that was I held a control shift and it does the perfect circle for you. Um, otherwise, you can also just change the measurements over to the side. We're using the um, bullseye button to line everything up perfectly, like so. Um, you can also manually change the sizes over to the side. Now I'm just trying to create a little bauble section here. So I've done like a rectangle and I'm just kind of making this up as I go, if I'm honest. So we're selecting both of those and I'm going to align it in the center. And I should have kept them selected, but that's okay. You select the little one first and then the big one so that the little one will align with the big one. And that's what I was doing there. So I had to keep undoing it because it was shifting. So we have joined then. Now I'm going to add like a circle part. And again, I did um, control shift to get a perfect circle, but you can also just change the dimensions over to the side. Um, and so then I'm going to weld with that little button there. And so now I've got the cute little thing and we're just going to create another one. Obviously that's not centered yet. Um, put that right in the middle like that. And then that will be the section to thread your string or whatever you want to use through. Now, if, when I make these in the future, I will in fact be doing them smaller. So I'm aligning them again just to make sure it is in the middle. Um, but that, that was a very big bauble, so I do plan on shrinking it down to make them in the future. Uh, not that it wasn't fun, it's just it's a bit big to hang on a tree. Uh, so now I've just copied the outer line. So I hit Control c and Control v to make an outer line. Um, because we need a second one for the back. And then I'm going to pick, I've just saved some random snowflakes off the internet. Um, not that one. That one had uh, copyright things that I didn't wasn't aware of, so we're not using that. So we picked a different one. Then we're going to go down to Trace Image, and it gives you a purple line that you can see, and you want to delete the image when it's done. Get rid of it. So I'm just going to use this one snowflake. Obviously, you could use as many as you wanted to. Um, I'm ungrouping them because I don't need that many lines. So I'm just going to delete out half the lines because we don't need it to double cut. So as you can see, now it's a simple snowflake. Um, and then I'm going to select those two and then regroup it. So it will cut out the center of the snowflake because I chose to. I'm now just going to shrink it down and kind of line it up along the edges. I'm zooming in so I can see how big of a snowflake I'm doing. And then I'm just going to change the sizes and just place them around the edge. Um, I'm going to do all of these first and then we'll like join them all together because I might want to change the positions of them like that. So I'm rotating it at the moment. Um, so there's less pointy bits right at the edge. Um, so to rotate, you just click on it. And then there's a little angle parts in all four of the corners. You just click and drag on those. I'm just sitting here going, do I want another one? That's what that pause was. I do. I'm going to do another one there. And I'm trying to del deliberately not make them exactly opposite each other because um, then they just look kind of too symmetrical for me and you also want to make sure you're leaving a gap across the middle to add a name too so what you do is you select the big one and then the little one and then you click that little tool at the left that looks like it's got a bit cut out and it joins them all together if you select the little one and then the big one it doesn't work so big one first now i'm just going to type my name I've got this um, font that I got from defont.com um, and now I'm just going to make sure that both edges are touching the edge like so and then I'm going to select the big part 
that's my font there for anyone that wants to go and get it from defont.com. So I select the big one, then my name, and then click that same button. And you can see it's now welded into that inner circle. Now, the one thing I did forget to do here was do a little join to the dots on the eye. So my dots don't have eyes, but because you're gluing it down, you can also just, as it cuts out the eye, take those pieces and glue them to the bauble. So that is another option. I did neither of those and that's okay. So now I'm going to select them all and I'm going to go down to my red line is set to cut at three mils per second at 100% power. And today I did two cuts. You'll see that in fast forward to make sure it absolutely cuts all the way through. So I've sped this up really, really fast. So we'd be here for ages, um, but I do have my air assist on. Um, this is a new bit of wood just because no particular reason. Um, so it does it a little bit first. Um, and it's doing everything twice, and then it'll come around and do the bigger thing. I got a phone call, which is why we skipped a little bit there. Um, unfortunately, I can't help that. These things happen. I had to take it. Um, you can see just there, it cut because it all just shifted down a little bit. Um, and so then, see, it goes all the way around twice, and then we just pull it out, and it's all done. So I have here my glitter and I'm just using, it's actually a fabric glue, but it's very similar to a PVA. So I'm just going to use this one so I don't go and buy more glue for my house. Oh, and it's very, very stuck on. Um, and then I'm just going to use like a cool spatula. Obviously you want to be over some paper because the glitter will otherwise go absolutely everywhere and we really don't want that. Right, so then we're just going to, now we don't have to worry so much about up there. But you want to spread your glue out so it's all over the main part. And you want to pretty much come out to the edges. Because you don't want to miss anywhere. It's okay to have a little bit of glitter right at the edge. What's not okay is if you miss a chunk. So I'm just going to spread it all the way out like so. Now you might need to do more than one layer of glitter. It'll depend on how well it sticks. So I'm just going to gently pry the lid off so I don't spill glitter everywhere. These are actually stuck on very, very well. Oh my gosh. It's not a screw off either. There we go. Now I'm going to start from the center and I'm just going to tap it out. Now you could obviously do patterns in your glitter if you want to. Um, you could do mostly tonal, you could swirl them so they look like a big lolly. I'm not going to do any of those things because it's out of my skill set. And I just want green. I'm doing this slowly as opposed to just dumping it all in the middle as well. Because we want to have it... All just done. So I'm getting out pretty close to the edge and you can see I am spilling stuff on my paper but that's why we did it. So it's used about half my tube for this size. This is a very big bauble though. Um, so then I'm just going to kind of, I can see it moving. So if I tap it this way you can kind of see the glitter go down. I just want to make sure that everywhere is covered. And then I'm just going to dump it upside down, tap it, and that's what I'm left with. Um, so now I'm just going to leave that to dry. I also just want to double check with this to make sure that we're not going to see any of the gaps. So you can kind of just hover it over. So I'm touching it so it's not actually touching anything. But you can see it's all going to cover it nicely. Uh, so I will let that dry. I'm going to go rinse this out with some water. And let that dry and then I'll put this glitter back into the tube using the paper. I'll show you how to do that and then we can glue the bits together and we're done. So this layer is dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop them over there. Pull this lid off again, which hopefully will be easier the second time. And then I can just lift up my tissue paper. Turn it into a bit of a funnel. And then just pour it, hopefully back in. Now it is a small area, 
So we're going to actually put a crease and then just gently shake the paper to put it all back in. Now you won't get all of it, obviously, but we did get a nice large amount of it. Um, and I can try that again later. So let's do... Let's do one more coat. So another option that you can do is a spray glue where you just spray it on and then pour it on. And I forgot to get my applicator. Applicator arrived. So this time I'm going to pour it here on the um, tissue paper. And I'm just going to put it where I feel like we need more glitter. So not everywhere. Some of it's actually quite thick with glitter. And I'd be silly to put even more on. But there's just a few spots that aren't quite as green as I was hoping. Um, so I'm just going to dot the glue in those places. And then pour the glitter on again. Now again, it doesn't matter if I pour extra on. Because I will do the same thing again once it's dry. All right, that's a lot of glitter, but now I can't see anything, so you can kind of shake it around. Gently tap it. Another option is, is you could put the holes, if you're going to make lots of these, get like a container that this will fit in, fill it up full of glitter and just kind of smush it in, would be if you were doing it in bulk. Um, but that, I mean, it's not dry yet, but that does look better. So once that's dry, we will just glue it all together. All right, guys, so we're on the home stretch. Um, I have put the excess glitter back in. So this was a full tube, and that's how much I've used for this large size. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my name and flip it over. As you can see, I did not remove the sticker, but that's right. Then I'm also going to use this as a paint palette again, like so. Uh, the main difference between this and wood glue is that it's more flexible, which doesn't really matter. Uh, but I did read it and it's washable, permanent, it's all the good stuff, but just and flexible. So I'm going to take this because I don't have any paint brushes at the moment and I have discovered that this actually works pretty well. And then I'm just going to Paint it onto the edge. Now I have seen people use their fingers, which obviously you can. This is me attempting to be classier than that. Although your fingers would definitely work. Again, you could use spray glue. I'm just going around the edge and then on all of my letters. And I'm kind of more splotching it than pulling the paint over. The main bits you want to worry about are the extremities on all of these um, snowflakes to make sure that those bits sit down. And you don't want the paint too thin either. Not too thick that it oozes, but not so thin that it won't stick to the glitter. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to take it and flip it over. So one thing I didn't do, and I did think about it and I just chose not to, was go and get the dots for my eyes um, because I'm now thinking that maybe I could do like little snowflakes and cut the snowflakes for my eyes, which would be very, very cute. It was an afterthought uh, and it's late at night here at the moment. So I'm just going to run my fingers around and kind of push to make sure it's all lined up. I'll see. I think I want more glue, in all honesty. There we go. It's a bit more glue. Line it all up. And then I'm going to place something heavy on top of it um, to help make sure that the layers will glue evenly so this is a box of boxes it's a plastic box of cardboard boxes so i'm going to use this because it's heavier than it looks and i will leave that to dry and then that's pretty much it you just add a string and off you go um 
So if you guys make some, please let me see them in my Facebook group. Or if you don't have Facebook and you really want me to see it, you can email me. I'm pretty sure my email address is attached here. Um, but yeah, let me know how you go, guys. Okay.